Beetle. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash Ganglin comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is the second part of a story entitled, Saved by a Hair. In the first part of the story, Patrolman Dan Garrett has taken on the investigation of the parole racket in an effort to save Jim Horton, the son of a friend of Mike Manigan, from a long term in jail. The body of Officer Joe Riley, investigating the kidnapping of Parole Commissioner Downey's daughter, Helen, has been tossed out of a fleeing sedan. The license number of the murder car leads to Gus Heinrichs, cafe owner. While questioning Heinrichs, Dan Garrett in his Blue Beetle disguise is temporarily stunned by a blow on the head. Nosy, one of Heinrichs' henchmen, has been sent to cover up the murder trail by running Heinrichs' sedan off a cliff into the sea at Lover's Leap. As the episode ended, Heinrichs was turning over to Officer Manigan the unconscious body of the Blue Beetle. As our story opens today... Manigan, still in Heinrich's office, is questioning him about the murder sedan. Now, what about this license number I have here? I'm sure I don't know anything about it. It's your number, ain't it? Yeah, it's my number. But the license plate must have been stolen from my car. Well, where is your car now? In the garage, back of my office here. Well, suppose we have a look. Well, what about the Blue Beetle on the floor there? No, he's still unconscious. He'll stay there till we get back. I've handcuffed him to the radiator pipe. All right, then, this way. I have a passageway connecting with my private garage. Well, go ahead, I'll follow you, but no monkey business. So I'm unconscious, am I? <laughs> I've just been playing possum. Now to burn these handcuffs off with my magic ray. There. Now to catch Nosy with Heinrich's other car, the murder car. Before he runs it off, lovers leap into the sea. I'll need that car for evidence. And maybe I can pick up the kidnap trail from Nosy. Well, that looks like the murder car ahead. Only one man in it. It must be Nosy. Yes, he's turned off on the road to lovers leap. I'll have to step on it. Here we go. Ah, this motorcycle can certainly travel. All right, Nosy. Pull up. Not me. No motorcycle cop's going to stop me. This is no motorcycle cop. It's the Blue Beetle. And he's going to nip. Hey, hey, get off this running water. Put on those brother. brakes. Put on those brakes quick. We'll both go over Lover's Leap together. Yeah, maybe you're going, but not me, brother. I'm oh, coming off. Oh, you don't. You're staying with me. Put on those brakes. It, it's too late. We're headed right for the cliff. Let me out of here. Let me out. You're going where I go, Nosy. I hope you can swim, because here we go. Oh! Manigan, I hope you're satisfied. Not completely. I'll continue with my investigations elsewhere. Good. And don't forget to pick up the Blue Beetle in my office. Oh, I'll pick him up, all right. It'll sure be a feather in my cap. Well, here we are at my office. You tell the DA I'm at his service to testify against the Blue Beetle any time where, you... where is the Blue Beetle? He's lying right there. Yeah, but he is now. And here's my handcuffs going right through. This is serious. We've got to catch that thief. Yes, but how? He's a slippery one, that blue beetle. That's your job, Manigan. You better get busy or I'll report you to the commissioner for negligence. No wonder our city is overrun with crooks. What we need is better police protection. Hello? 
Commissioner Downey speaking. This is the Blue Beetle, Commissioner. The Blue Beetle? Yes. I think I've located your daughter. You have? Where is she? She's being held prisoner at the old sawmill. How do you know? I rescued one of the kidnapped gang from drowning. And the car he was driving went over the cliff at Lover's Leap. He confessed to me. Fine work. I'll have the police on the trail right away. Just a minute, Commissioner. Don't do that, please. Oh, what is this, a joke? If it is, I'll have every police officer in the city on your trail. I'll... Now, wait. Listen to me. Well? There's a chance of rescuing your daughter and apprehending a lot of crooks if this matter is handled right. What do you mean, handled right? Now, first, tell me. Have you received any ransom demands from the kidnappers? No. Not a word of any kind. Have you anything that might be of value to a gang of crooks? No, not that I can think of. Any papers of any sort that might be of value to the wrong people? Only the parole records and recommendations, a list of prospective parolees. Where are they? In my safe here at home. That's the answer. This whole thing ties up with the parole record. What do you mean? The kidnappers are after those papers. Who knows the combination of your safe besides yourself? Only my daughter. That's why they're holding her, to make her divulge the combination of your safe. They plan to steal those papers and blackmail every man that's out on parole or who may be later released on parole. Why, I never heard of such a fantastic plan. I'll call the police commissioner and well, Listen, have... Commissioner Downey. If you do that, you'll scare these rats underground. Well, what do you advise, Blue Beetle? Set no guards around your house at all. Move to a hotel right away. Uh, but... I'll leave everything to me, Commissioner. The Blue Beetle will have these crooks rounded up before dawn. Now, look, Miss Downey. We want the combination of your father's safe. I won't tell you. I'm sure you will, Miss Downey. Swim. Yeah, boy. Start the saw going. Right. Run along through. You hear that, Miss Downey? Yes, I heard it. What about it? Just imagine yourself bound to a log being run through like a glass log. Why, you fiend, you wouldn't dare to... There. Sprint. Yeah, boss. Shut off the motor. Give me a hand here with Miss Downey. All right. You take our feet. I'll take our head. You dare touch me and I'll scream the whole world down around your ears. You go ahead and scream. No one will hear you out here. We are miles away from civilization in the woods here. Pick her up, Squint. Right. Gagger. I mean, no, don't stare at a woman's yelling. I have to that log on the saw rack while I stick this gag in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Help me. And now, Miss Downey, yeah, one last chance. Will you tell me the combination of your father's safe? Shake your head, yes or no. All right, that's your last chance. Nobody knows you're here. Nobody knows we're here. Start the saw, Spent. Oh, hold it, Spent. So, you're ready to talk, Miss Downey. Another foot and it would have been too late. Remove the gag, Swen. Right, boss. Good. Uh, now, Miss Downey, the combination. Uh, dial left to seven, right to twelve, then left twice to eight. Uh, and she's fainted, boss. What'll I do with her? We got what we wanted. We will let her go. She'll squeal. Now, start your saw and let's beat it. Right, boss. Hey, hey, what's that noise? The Blue Beetle. Hey. Stop that motor or I'll blast you. What do I do, boss? Get away from that motor. Oh. That puts you out of the running squint. And now for you, Heinrichs. Where are you? Oh, there you go. Well, I'll get you later. The Blue Beetle's going to nip the whole gang of murderers, kidnappers, and racketeers. Seven, right twelve, then left twice to eight. There. And now? The last scene of the play, Heinrich, the Blue Beetle. Yes, and he's going to nip. Not this time, Blue Beetle. Drummond, the mouthpiece, Gangland's famous old man counselor at law, who dyes his hair to keep him young looking. I may be old, but I know my business. 
The law's never caught up with me yet, and they never will. I'm too clever for them. You're not dealing with the law now. You're facing the Blue Beetle. But the Blue Beetle will never nip again. Put down that gun, Drummond. Not till I've wiped out you and Heinrich. Not me, Drummond. I didn't squeal. No, but you were trying to double-cross me. So here's one for you, Heinrich. And one for you, Blue Beetle. Drummond, your hair, it's turning white. White? My beautiful black hair turning white? Oh. That for you, Drummond. Never turn your eyes from your opponent if you want to win your point. You vain old man. Your hair was your undoing and my salvation. Here comes the law for you, you crooks. They'll put you where you can't prey on poor unfortunates like Jim Horton. Your parole racket is smashed. The Blue Beetle's job is done. So the Blue Beetle smashed another racket and won another battle in his crusade against crime. The moral of this story is that neither experience nor intelligence is proof against right and good. History proves that, in the long run, right always triumphs. Further adventures of the Blue Beetle will be dramatized in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted box feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.